Hey guys, rather than do a funny intro, we're gonna get straight into the specifics of the video today, and that is we are going to estimate the performance that we're gonna get from your shiny new 3080 and 37 graphics card. Uh, if you didn't watch the live stream or follow me on my Twitch channel, you know we've been talking about the costs, the price to performance, and all these other different aspects. But today I want to laser in on a critical slide that you've probably have seen on very many uh, YouTubers or tech sites out there. And that is the quote, relative performance chart. Uh, a lot of people are getting really hyped about this chart for good reason. It's really good numbers, but a lot of people are still really skeptical as to what that really means in terms of performance and kind of price. So I went ahead and did the legwork. We did a bunch of maths and we have determined what your graphics card, your shiny new RTX 3000 card, is going to perform like in a couple different games at a specific resolution and a specific setting. Big asterisk warning here. These are all calculations. This is all estimated values, but I am basing those values off of real world measurements and data we've gotten directly from NVIDIA. So I think there is some relative accuracy here. And of course, you guys can fight me down in the comments uh, and we can talk about it there. So stick around, let's get straight to it. Now, if you guys missed the live stream, let's go over the you know high level you know dates and costs for all these different graphics cards. Uh, we're not gonna be talking about the 3090 graphics card today. I do believe that is going to be more of a Titan replacement, uh, but that card will be right around $1,500 MSRP and will be launching uh, right around September 17th. It's more than likely gonna be a paper launch. There's gonna probably be some yield issues and availability issues. So if you're looking for a new um, Titan replacement, that's the card to get for now. Uh, but we're gonna be primarily focusing on the 3080 and the 3070. So the 3080 is going to be the quote flagship for the you know high-end gamer amongst us. That price is gonna be $699 or $700 MSRP, and that's gonna be launched on September 17th. So we've got about a week and a half before you know all this chaos comes to you know fruition, and we're gonna really be able to uh, get the good, accurate data. The 3070, though, that seems to be the value winner. It's going to be right at $499 or MSRP of $500, but that's going to be launching later in October. So we're going to have to get our feet wet. And to be honest, a lot of people have been harking on its performance compared to the 2080 Ti. And also another thing to keep in mind, um, this also has, or the RTX 3000 series, has all the extra benefits of the tensor core improvements as well as the ray tracing core improvements. So if you had a 1000 series graphics card, this kind of performance uplift, I think, is just astronomical, and I definitely think it's worth picking up in the future. And that brings us into today's video, that dreaded greatest generational leap performance chart. I think it's a great... Uh, Kind of yardstick. It's not like a micrometer or anything, but I think it's a good a good marketing tool to show how well some of these graphics cards will perform when compared against each other across generations and all that stuff. But the big thing here, guys, is it is relative performance, and they are setting the measurement bar pretty low. They're basing everything off of the GTX 980. That's a pretty ancient card at this point. Uh, but everything's been normalized to that card's 4K. We haven't gotten much detail as to how NVIDIA is running uh, and measuring and calculating these specifics. But what I did is I took all of these values and I created uh, what I call a performance multiplier based on what they've provided in the chart. Uh, we'll throw it up here on the slide deck. And I believe we actually see a really good performance improvement once we start getting into the 2000 series graphics cards, the 2070 Super reporting a 2.3 uh, 2.3 times performance improvement, 2080 Supers 2.75. But the big thing here, guys, is the 3070, the 2080 Ti are supposed to have a quote 3.3 times per relative performance improvement, which is huge. Um, so we're going to be taking all of these factors into account. And I actually have borrowed some data from Hardware Unboxed. What I did is I went to some of their older data for their 2080 Super video, I believe, where they actually benchmarked the 2080 Super, the 2070 Super, and the 2080 Ti. And I used their games, some of their games, 
and I reported their average value and their minimum 1% low values in terms of performance. After that, what I did was I then back calculated based on that multiplier, the relative performance multiplier, and I calculated what a 980 GTX 980 would perform like. And since we're given some, you know, pretty weird numbers, what I ended up doing is I created a couple different averages. I based one off of just the pure average for all the calculations I was able to do for the GTX 1080. And I came up with, you know, a good average and 1% low frame per second uh, for each of the different games. But then I also took the 2080 Super and made kind of a 980 relative performance metric for that. So we can compare 2080 Super to the 3080. And then I also did the same with the 2070 Super and the 3070. That way we can kind of triangulate a little bit better if, you know, some of these metrics might be off by a little bit, the multipliers might be off. Uh, but let's look at the data. And again, I guys, I got to I got to emphasize this is all guesstimation work. It's all based on real data, uh values we've been presented from the marketing team. So I think it's a good stake in the ground as to what we should expect and what we should be holding Nvidia to. They've claimed this stuff. We expect this performance. So let's get to the charts. So the first game we're going to be looking at today is going to be Battlefield 5. This data was collected at 4K resolution with their ultra presets. And it comes as no surprise that the GTX 980 does not play well at 4K. We're averaging about 25 frames per second there. And bumping up to the 2070 Super, we are able to get, you know, playable 4K FPS. Again, the, 30, the 2080 also does pretty well. And then the 2080 Ti gets 81 FPS. Minimum 1% lows is right around 70 or so. So what we did, we took that 3.3 multiplier, we back calculated the GTX 980, and then we back calculated the uh, 3070 uh, data. And what we got is actually pretty close. Uh, I think once we take the average of all the 980 data, we're able to get 83 frames per second at 4K with ultra settings at Battlefield 5. That's really close to what they're getting. So I, I think our math here is actually kind of sound. You know, there could be room for up or down. We'll have to, again, look at the charts once they come out in review form. But so far, the 3070 is looking right on top of that 2080 Ti. Again, we're going to go ahead and extrapolate out the RX 3080 performance here as well. And what's shocking here is that both calculations of the GTX 980 performance, they line up pretty well. Given if NVIDIA's information is correct and that Battlefield 5 matches the average performance improvement, we should be expecting these types of FPSs. The next game I'm going to look at today is going to be F1 2019. Again, this is at 4K and with the ultra high detail settings. It's pretty much the only setting I run on my benchmarks anyways. Uh, again, the 980 is clearly not ready for 4K, but once we take all of the multiplication factors and the relative performance, you know, the 2070 Super still is getting average frame rates above 60 FPS. And then here we go, RTX 2080, 91 frames per second. And we are so, we're within spitting distance of the averaged 980 data with the RTX 3070. And, you know, we're, we're, we are within a few frames per second on all of these different metrics here. So I really think this is a good standard and an excellent way to expect what's coming forward. Forza Horizon 4, you know, we've got two car racing games here. I thought that was kind of fun. Uh, but here is an interesting thing. Um, again, for the GTX 980, clearly can't do it. And what we see here actually is where the 20 T 2080 Ti starts to slip compared to the RX 3070. So, you know, our performance scaling metric might be off by a little bit here, but we are within 10 frame per second, 10%. You know, I, this is going to be one of those games we're definitely going to have to look at the final reviews, but we are in the ballpark. We're above 60 frames per second. All right, let's start bumping it up to the very graphically demanding games again. That's where these relative performance metrics were based off of in the first place. Metro Exodus is known as a really uh, power hungry game. It definitely pushes the limit, especially when you turn on RTX. But here we go. We go to the RX 2080 Ti and we actually get better performance with our math here uh 
with the 2080 Ti versus the averaged GTX 980 RTX 3070 data. So that's really impressive. But the, the spread here is just so minimal. So I, I think we're still on the right track. This is a graphically demanding game. So, you know, if NVIDIA doesn't produce these kinds of FPS or anywhere close to this come review time, we definitely have some reasons to kick and scream. Rainbow Six Siege is not a graphically demanding game by any stretch, um, but once you bump up the resolutions all the way to 4K, you run at the highest presets and you even increase the rendered resolution to 100%, we're again seeing the pattern that we are going to be expecting some pretty good results from these newer graphics cards. Uh, I'm still recommending the you know, 3080 if you're going to be going for the super high refresh rates, because right here we're hitting uh, 120 FPS at 4K. So if you're going to be looking at those 240 hertz monitors, or heck, if you're going to try and tr try out the, what is it called, uh, NVIDIA Edge or whatever their latency thing is, you're going to need the high-end graphics cards if you're going to be bumping up to those higher resolutions. All right, lastly, we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And this is, again, one of those graphically demanding titles. I love running it in my benchmark suites as it stands. Here's the kicker. This is 4K, highest settings. The 2080 Super doesn't get 60 FPS. Heck, even the 2080 Ti doesn't even get to the 60 frames per second with a 4K. And here we go. RX... 3070 barely squeaks by. Uh, this is with both of our calculation metrics, so I do believe we have some room here to see if we can actually do 4K 60 FPS on Red Dead Redemption 2, Marvel's Avengers, uh, Flight Simulator. I really think the 3070 is going to be struggling it when it comes to those types of games at 4K, but if you're going to be playing 4K 60 FPS, you are going to have to go with the RX 3080. We are seeing right around 80 FPS with both of the measurements. This is not actually measured FPS values. I can't say it enough. This is all based on calculations from NVIDIA using current real world data sets using their presets. And this is kind of really promising when it goes towards uh, the September 17th reveal and launch. I am super stoked. The thing I'm most impressed with, and I'm looking for some more data for that, is just the ray tracing performance. I've been a longtime supporter of ray tracing. Uh, I wasn't part of the Just Buy It crowd from Tom's Hardware, but I definitely saw the potential with ray tracing. I hopped on the Minecraft RTX bandwagon back. You can check out the channel, the videos here on my channel. But it's like ray tracing is finally going to be hitting the mainstream. Consoles are going to have it. Uh, both of the different next-gen GPUs are going to be supporting it. We've got direct storage to consider. We've got all this new technology. I love talking about this stuff. You guys should definitely check me out over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash theturk. I talked about it at nauseum last night. Uh, and if you guys want to see more content here on YouTube, make sure to hit the notification bell, hit the subscribe button. I want to do this 3000 series stuff. Good justice. I want to make sure you guys are up to date on the latest information and you're informed and i really want to be you know growing with you guys and just gaming as much as i can so thank you guys for watching i hope you take all of this data with a grain of salt it is estimations you know but i think they are kind of close and it's a good yardstick and a stake in the ground uh to say nvidia you better be this good or i'm gonna get in trouble because if i'm gonna drop 800 bucks on a graphics card yeah it better be good thanks guys take care